Hello, welcome to Floyd Models Kit View Time. Today we've got Ravel's brand new 132nd scale P51 Mustang. Now, I know what you're thinking, do we really need another one? But actually, I think this could be a little bit of a gem, purely because when you're thinking of Mustangs, we've got some cracking ones in 132nd scale. Let's face it, Tamiya, we've built it. It's a beautiful kit. We've got Sukumori's, we've got everybody's, but they're really, really expensive. What I do like about the Ravel ones is that they're a really brilliant price to start with and then you can add on what details you want to so if you wanted to and what we're going to hopefully happen this particular kit is that there'll be a lot of aftermarket parts that will come out for it then you can take it to whatever standard you want so from that point of view if you're on a little bit of a budget or you just want the overall appearance of a mustang it could be a very nice one to go with now you might have a look back we've done the me 262 and we did the fw 190 and we threw the works at them i.e resin engines aftermarket photo etch so forth and so on and turned what is a pretty normal shell of a kit if we like into something extremely nice so what we're hoping now is that this mustang will give us that perfect jump point to think from basic just overall shape of a mustang looks great if you just want to do especially something in flight where it's all going to be covered up or it's going to give you the opportunities to take it as far as you really want to go so anyway in the box we have a beautiful little bit of uh, uh, box art on the front, as we can see, is Louis IV. All right, and then running round, again, more pictures of Louis IV on this one. Kit number for this one is 03944. Your pretty standard end of box. And then on the back, it's that flip open type. We've got some close-ups of some of the details down on this one as we make our way through. And some of the colour call-outs in that horrible way that only Revel seem to be able to do. Now, as we all know, I'm not a fan of these boxes <coughs> or their packaging or anything else, so we'll gloss over that. But mainly to say I don't like the open-ended box way of doing it. It's an interesting sound. Okay, and it's just... I don't know, they crush easy and they're not very nice, all right? But there we go, that one's done in there. So let's have a look at the instructions to start with. So we're hoping for some decals inside here, which we do. Let's just pop those out of the way for the moment. Okay, so usual thing, um, you know, with the, the various make your mind up on the colour call outs, but I think most of us will just go through what paints we've got on our racks. So we've got the tree call out for the sprues, as we can see already, just glancing over this. First time I've even looked at this kit, you can see we've got a separate tail, so we're thinking maybe other versions will be coming down the line, as we know. Ravel's brand new instructions were a lot easier to follow than the old ones, to be honest. Full colour and uh, colour and decal uh, call outs as you make your way through, which is quite nice. So usual thing instrument panel going right the way through those obviously we've got some decals going on for the actual fine details making up the cockpit so we've obviously got the fuel tank to the rear and then obviously all the areas on there the radio equipment batteries things like that going on the top and then some fine details and then the seat being fitted in Okay, then we've got framework for the inside, so it's separate walled frames, which would be quite nice. It'll make a nice uh, frame system to go inside. All the details, so obviously, you've got the throttles and mixtures and all those types of things down in there, canopy area, things like that on this side, and then obviously fitting all the sub components down into there to make up, which will be the framework for the actual main cockpit area itself. Again, very nice touch. The radiator system being put in as well, uh, down in there. Uh, and those being fitted in, as you might imagine, because they're going to drop through the bottom. Colour call outs, installing the tail, um, and because we're installing the tail, we're thinking maybe other versions of Mustangs coming out, so that's why I've done a separate tail system for it. A couple of all important holes to open up as well, just for locating things like that. And then, again, we're devoid of any engine detail, but this is what we're talking about. Hopefully it'll give us room for expansion in the near future, but we've got the actual exhaust being fitted down onto those. Some removal required just to get those to fit in for the different types and those being going in. And and then it's time to bring it all together. So usual thing, cockpit sort of subsection being fitted down in there, the radiator section, and unusually not the tailwheel one. So we've got that one being fitted down in there. Okay, then it's over to the wing. So some opening up of the holes, as you might imagine, for some of the um, fuel tanks, things like that, or rockets, whichever you're going to be fitting onto this one. In this case, we're going to be putting over all the actual rocket wing areas because this version doesn't have it. But we've actually got subframe and some nice details going down into there on the wing spar system. And then the wing spars being fitted in with the wheel wells being dropped in, forward areas, front gun mounts being fitted through. And then we've got the control stick coming up through the floor as it would in real life. Okay, wing section fits along the bottom 
is just going to fit straight in at the top okay and then the same on there we've got the radiator system being fitted just so it tucks in underneath that wing okay rear radiator cooler door open or closed obviously depending on which version you want to do and then down on the front depending on obviously gear open or closed we've got another part of the actual uh, front gear well being fitted in or as you can see over here you can just do it with them all totally closed up all right so pretty straightforward on all of those rudder systems tail planes everything else again not movable which is a little bit uh, unfortunate would be nice to see that one but unfortunately they're going to be fixed so either in the up or down positions okay those being all fitted in the flap system being fitted in as you might imagine right the way through again either option of deployed or uh, up okay <clears throat> front canopy or the windscreen we should say and canopy section being fitted through on all of that one tail wheel system being done canopy open close usual things and then opening up various areas you're gonna have to cut this into three to give you actual gear doors for the actual main gear doors on those being fitted to the wheels obviously all of those being fitted down there and then put in prop system pretty standard and then obviously we've got the paper fuel tanks all the teardrop ones being fitted or bonds to the actual uh, out of racks as you might imagine on that one pitot tubes a few aerials and then we're done color call out your usual type of thing uh, down on these so there we go we've got the uh, p51d and this one is louis 4 okay uh, which was uh, lieutenant uh, tjj Kristen being fitted down there and there and the other side of that one or the other one we've actually got is uh, desert rat uh, which is captain herschel pasco okay so that's a couple of nice little options on there but let's face it this is the one thing you will be sport to death with is all the different types of choices so as we said before it's one of those kits it's quite basic but actually looking at it cockpit detail looks very very good so i don't think you're going to have to be worrying about cockpits things like that maybe just a harness set in there just to liven that up so again if you're not worried about the engine this could be a really nice starting point for you okay decals again Really, you know, I know a lot have been said about um, decals recently and various things, and I've always said that Revell does tend to have this little flat problem, but these actually don't look too bad. And you catch them on the close-up, you see a lot of carrier film on those, but technically, they're not too bad. I think they're going to be okay. They're going to be usable, let's put it that way. But if you wanted to, you could whip down the aftermarket route and take care of that. But basically, pure good printing, solid colour, everything you would be looking for. Right, so... Let's start over on this bag. Okay. Get rid of that. Unusual way of doing some things on this, actually, a little bit different. So let's start with the, the fuselage, because obviously that's what we're going to be looking into. So generally, as you can see on the sprue, no real problems with it. To be honest, it doesn't look quite as flashy as I usually would expect from a Revell kit. That's quite nicely done molded on all of that really no problems at all again you know we don't have a million rivets over the mustang but this is where obviously the rivet counters come out because technically it would be puttied over and would have been sanded and then would have been painted so you're not going to see rivets all over this guy anyway so in some ways very nice but hopefully on the close-up you can actually see we've got some nice details on the actual fuselage sections it looks quite a firm, harder type plastic as well. It's not as softly moulded as perhaps some of the other Revell kits we've seen in the past. But generally on these parts up here, we've got the battery, the control stick, things like that, some of the gear parts. Um, and then obviously we've got the, the oil uh, radiator coolers at the front, things like that, the main gear. Generally, very nice indeed. It seems to be... Again, a harder type plastic. So noticing this lot, for the last couple of months, uh, Airfix, Revell, things like that, their plastic seems to be coming to a higher quality. The great thing about it is it produces a sharper details, things like that, than perhaps what we've seen before. But generally, I have to say, that's a pretty good mold. There's a very, very small amounts of flash right the way over it. I think it's going to be easy clean up and all the rest of it. Ejector pins seem to be pretty much there's a couple of ones you're going to want to take care of like this big guy in the middle perhaps you're going to want to take this one out but generally all the others are tucked out of the way no problem at all and to be honest they would be an easy clean up as well and then over here this is what struck me uh, as soon as we've just seen in the bags is the way they've actually done the flaps molded in one 
and in the vertical. I don't think I've actually seen that from a manufacturer do a part like that before. Normally, they're all the usual way of laid out flat. So it looks like we've seen a little bit of a difference. The way they've done this then is to make them hollow, as you can see, in one piece injection molding, which is actually a really nice touch. I don't think we've seen that before on any other kit doing that particular part. And again, we've got the gun ones over here. They've been molded the same way, so that way they're hollow down on the inside. A very nice touch indeed. So generally, you can see we've got those gun areas up there. I think by the time they've been drilled out, they'll be uh, looking a lot better. And then we've got the spinner. The nose cap looks quite nice. We've got a little bit of detail even at the end. Okay, these exhaust uh, manifolds, things like that being put down on there as well. A couple of different types of uh, instrument panel um, uh, over the tops of those. As we know, we've got two different versions of this coming out. Um, the actual prop itself, so this is the big blade one. Again, a little bit of cleanup just on the edges, things like that, but generally quite nice. And then some of the smaller details we've got down here, bits for the seat uh, and stuff. So generally pretty good. But these flaps actually, we've got a little bit of sink mark. Hopefully the camera may or may not. I don't know how well the camera's gonna get this with the light, but we may have a little bit of sinkage, but to be honest, in fact, we've got a lot of sinkage on this side. I'm, as I say, I don't know how well the camera's gonna play ball with this. But again, it looks like a light effect, but there is a little bit of sinkage just down on these. So maybe a little bit of putty work is gonna be required down on there. But things like this down in here, we've got the seat, that's beautifully molded, no problem at all. And there we go, you can see those hollow flaps down on there and the other parts generally all very very good indeed the tail system so obviously this is the different version so this way we've got a different instrument panel up here the tail system uh, and things like that so these is what's going to be specific okay so the instrument panel it's got raised bezels as you can see looks pretty good on that no problem at all we've actually got the bomb racks okay this is the, for underneath the actual engine the, the bottom of the combing if you like around the engine that's fine a couple of other small details we've got the little switchology down in here for the actual weapons management system on the mustang so it's your rocket bomb selector things like that down at the bottom the tail system again actually doesn't look too bad some very nice detail you get it in the light there no problem with that at all. Slight raised details down here at the back for the actual ribbing on the actual tail planes. Those are quite nice as well, so no problem with that. Yeah, again, very nicely done. Some nice details down in there. Okay, so down in here we've got the wing stars. Okay, so let's have a look at the all important wings. As you can see, it's a big old bird. It handles it well. It has got a hell of a texture on the surface. Now this is where, depending on which side of the fence you're on, you either want the rivets, very similar to what um, Tamiya did with theirs, where it had the rivets all on it, or you can do this way, which doesn't have the rivets. Now, again, this is one of those things where historically uh, it shouldn't have any riveting because they were all puttied over when they left the factory. But we all like rivets because it adds detail and depth. So in some ways, although this would be totally accurate and correct, I don't know, I just think it needs a few, okay? But generally, as you can see, you've got the gun bays and everything else, and I'm sure somebody might pop along afterwards and do the guns for this one as a separate one, and those could be fitted in. That would look absolutely beautiful and work your way through. It does have quite a texture to it, but in some ways it would. On the inside, as we can see, we've got a little bit of formal work on the wingtips, which is a nice touch. And then down here in the middle, we can see we've actually got some uh, sort of uh, ribbing work and things like that for the uh, actual top side of the inside of the actual main wheel well section as well, which again, it's a very, very nice touch indeed. But generally no sinkage, no problem with any of that. That's very nice indeed. Okay, underside of the said wings. So again, we've got a little bit of detail. This is where we were talking about puttying over, catch it in the light there, you can see it, these little guys down on here for this particular version. To be accurate, we've got the identification lights on actually on the wingtips things like that. Again, a little bit of riveting detail down under here. And again, nice touch up down here. We've actually got raised, I'm gonna get it to, I'm gonna get it to go. There we go, you can hear it. So we've got raised riveting for these big plates down the bottom, a little bit of recessed as well around on this one. So actually that's quite correct. No problem with that at all. And again, very nicely done. All the ejector pins, very smooth and out of the way, but you can probably just see from the plastic, very shiny. The mold has been very, very well done. So no problem with any of that. So we've got a little bit of sink mark just here 
on the the leading edge you probably catch it just there in the light tiny little bit of sink mark down in there but again something you almost expect Ravel to have okay so lots of bits and pieces going down on here so we've got ink tape scoops wing spars things like that so if we pop around this way so there's your bottom of your door which obviously you're going to cut that in three in a moment we've got some of this framework detail for down on the inside and then down on here we've got some of the formers and bulkheads and stuff for the radiator as we're making our way through some more gear door things backs of the seats and stuff got the wing spar coming down in here as you can see we've got the seat intake scoops and the oil cooler scoop on the nose as well so again from the inside you can see very nice job on all of these to be honest some actually very very nice crisp molding a lot sharper than perhaps we used to and the nice touch is as well we don't have any ejector pins on the inside of the main door so you're going to cut this into sections obviously into four pieces but at least you're not going to have to worry about anything and it's got good thickness of detail right the way through so we're actually quite liking that Okay, so down on here, the business end, so we've got some of the framework, things like that, and obviously we've got the tailplanes, so I think if we just jump straight in, we can see we've got <clears throat> some obviously little tabs, things like that, to come off, to cut these off and things. Technically, this is the face side of it, so this will be your details for down on the inside of the cockpit side walls, things like that, so we've got the throttle assembly, the trim sections, things like that down on here. Okay, and then if we flip over, we've got the inside of the radiator cooling system. Again, it's got some nice detail down in there. A couple of ejector pins, but you're not going to see those at all. Okay, this is the tub section. So we've got the floor, we've got the holes down in here for the fuel gauges, uh, for the wing tanks being put in, and then the rear parts. And then down over on here, you can probably see we've got textures and ribbing for the actual uh, ailerons down on the outside. And then obviously we've got things like the rudder uh, sorry, and uh, tailplanes again two halves of those going to be putting those all together one place uh, ailerons down on there but generally I have to say really very very nice okay last up <coughs> for the main ones we've got weapons and fuel tanks and we've got the gear okay so these are going to be a match pair so just down on here as you can see we've actually got the uh, the paper tanks down on here, we've got the aluminium uh, drop tanks, we've got the radiator system which is quite nice, we've got a, a, the actual freefall bomb, we've got the wheels, no uh, flat spot on those so actually there's no weight on wheels, they are rounded, you're going to have to put your own in, we've got the sway braces for the bombs, things like that, uh, the oleo strut and things, so that's all very nicely done. Again, the biggest thing I'm noticing, we've got these big dots all along the framework for everything, and these are sink marks actually into the injection molding process, but actually there's none on the aircraft itself, which is really very, very nice. Okay, canopy, <coughs> which sounds like it's rattling around in here, scraping up against itself. Got a little bit of sinkage, I have to say, I can see it straight off the bat here. You can probably see it on the glass on the armoured glass front down on here. You can see you've got that little bit of wobble and distortion down in there. Uh, it is quite thickly moulded, that's the trouble with it. We've got quite a lot of wobble, shall we say, on it. They're nice and clear, but the clarity is spoilt by the... You can probably see how it's wobbling around on all these sections. I know it's a difficult one to, to cast. Navigation down, lights down on here. Obviously, if you'd be doing those red, amber, and green, we've got the landing light uh, over here, and we've actually got the gun sight as well, and a few other small lights, navigation lights, things like that. The all-important back canopy actually doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look as bad as the front ones. Again, it's a complex area to try and mould, but you can probably see we've got quite a lot of ripples and distortions in it and things like that, but actually it's not too bad. It, it seems nice and clear uh, and things like that. So no real problems with that one. And there we go. It looks, to be honest, a really good kit. Now, as I said before at the beginning of the review, the thing I like about this one, it is nowhere near as expensive as perhaps you're gonna be finding with the, you know, the AAA titles out there, like the Tamiya ones in 132nd. And it's an upstep from things like the old um, uh, Dragon uh, P51 because, yeah, that's a little bit fiddly as well. Having built all of them now, apart from this one, I have to say this one definitely has its place. Now, to be honest with you, when this one was first announced and it was got released, it was one of those where I'm like, I'm not overexcited because it's another Mustang and Mustangs have been done to death. But I think perhaps Ravel have found a little niche market here for a good quality kit 
Very nice interior detail for the cockpit area. No engine and all the fussy bits and gun bays and everything else, which is fair enough. But what you're going to end up with is actually a really nice model at a very good price. And as we said before, I think if I was to be doing this one and we were going to be talking, let's not mess around with engines and gun bays, I'm thinking I'll probably stick with what we've got there, maybe change the gear, uh, the wheels, things like that. And I'll definitely put in a set of fabric harnesses into it just to make it go. But apart from that, I really do think that's all this kit needs. And that's why it has a beautiful beautiful place in the hobby and a good place in the market as well for somebody who doesn't want to fork out hundreds of pounds on an expensive Tamiya Mustang or something else like that but they do want the bigger scale 132nd scale Mustang then this is definitely the one for you. So there we go that is Ravel's 132nd P51D Mustang.